Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. You find Ross, Widget, Gizmo and me, along with our last member of the crew, a small Frenchman called Stanley, whose main role in our lives is to look after my grandchildren most of the time. But he's a bit of a piratical addition to our crew. He only has one eye. He's a delightful soul. And he's a French bulldog. Not very long ago, one of you kind people asked whether we could show you the crew. Well, of course we can. This is them. <laughs> this is Widget down here. He's an old boy, born in Lechlade. His mother was a border terrier. His father, a miniature schnauzer. This is his grandson, Gizmo, who was born in Edinburgh. He's a brilliant member of the crew. It's a bit of a joke, really, of course, because they don't really need us. They could just easily do this whole thing on their own. However, the only other member of the crew, not nearly as important, of course, is Ross, who is behind the camera at the moment. Uh, it's no good asking him to come in front. I will at some stage or another, so you can get a glimpse of him. I've got one or two very interesting films of him flying the drone. We might slot them in for you. Anyway, here we are in the wonderful village of Hawley. This church is extraordinary. We're having a lovely time, as you know, in this extraordinary part of the Cotswolds which is really just on the fringes of the Cotswolds where this golden stone is all over the place. We're just a couple of miles from Edge Hill which is our destination in the next few days. Um, this is a lovely village with an extraordinary church and a wonderful depiction of St Christopher. Obviously the patron saint of travellers therefore very appropriate for us. We're going to show you around. Come with me. The name Hawley means village on a peninsula of land, because it sits between two streams. The village is Saxon in origin. Medieval Hawley belonged in part to the Cathedral of Lincoln, which explains why such a small village has two manor houses. Bramshill was the lay manor, and Hawley Manor was the prebendal manor. The latter changed hands many times over the centuries. And to my astonishment, I discover that it belonged for a short time to one of my Brett ancestors, about which, to be honest, I shall remain a little coy. It seems to have been a gift from the first Duke of Buckingham, who ran during the reigns of James I and Charles I, what was probably the most corrupt government in English history. He dispensed patronage to his relations with great abandon. They were known as the Kindred, and included even remote members of his family. The Bretts were his first cousins and benefited substantially. Hawley, however, remained in Brett hands for a very short time as the estate was quickly divided and sold on. Hawley is one of Oxfordshire's most northerly villages with its parish boundary at one point doubling as the county boundary with Warwickshire and the Norman Tower of the parish church, St Ethel Readers, sits at the highest point of the village, watching over a population of about 300. As you enter this lovely, unrestored church through the south door, you are confronted by a large fresco of St Christopher on the wall of the north aisle. The saint, as usual, is represented as carrying the infant Christ across a stream upon his shoulders, to whom he says, What art thou, and art so young, bore I never so heavy a thing? And the answer is, Yea, I be heavy, no one then is, for I am the king of bliss. These images were not uncommon, they were always large, and in situations where they might easily be seen, for it was an ancient belief that whosoever had seen the figure would not die that day any sudden or accidental death, thus making it impossible to give a final confession. 
This one, however, is certainly the best preserved in the county, and possibly the whole country. The continued existence of this wall painting and a couple of others in this church confirm the impression that the area through which we're moving at the moment was much less brutally affected by the iconoclastic times of the dissolution. However, some of the exciting discoveries in this church are not as old as they look. In 1947, T. Lawrence Dale carried out a remarkable refitting and installed the rude loft with its canopy, a lovely lectern and pulpit, and a painted candelabrum. Stone altars were provided for both aisle chapels. The south contains a Walsingham Madonna by John Allenby. The lovely chamber organ, made by John Irvine, and apparently dated 1765, is supposed to have once belonged to the composer George Frederick Handel, but I'm pretty sure Handel died in the 1750s, so it's unlikely. Perhaps it's another Handel. This village shows all the signs of a busy, well-kept community, thriving in every way, even having an excellent village website keeping everyone in the village informed. Shortly after arriving, we met a local resident who explained that he had only just recently moved to the village, having been forced away from his last home by encroaching development, but that he had already made many friends and was hugely flattered by the welcome he and his wife had received from the villagers. Perhaps a sign of the strength of this community is the continued existence of an exceptional trust fund. Founded by Michael Harding in 1627, the trust established a school and provided an education to village children for some 400 years. It's true the trust has had its ups and downs. At one stage, the building at the core of the legacy supposed to provide a schoolroom needed to be completely rebuilt. But for the sum of just over £13, that shows how long ago it was, its rebuilding was achieved and paid for by the trust's income. More recently, children from the orphanage in Roxton Lane attended the school, as did evacuees from East London who lived in Hawley during World War II. The school closed in 1969, and now the Michael Harding Trust maintains it as a rural studies centre for visiting schoolchildren and as a village hall. It's been a fascinating little trip around Hawley. It's a lovely village, and the church is extraordinary. And now we're safe, of course, having seen the St. Christopher. I'm glad to have been able to introduce you to the crew. They're having a pretty frustrating time. They, if I'm honest, they'd rather be running around. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on all the normal platforms. Visit our website, thecostablerexplorer.co.uk, where you'll find details of all the stuff we've done in the past. Our edition of Evan's book is imminent, so keep an eye open for that. And we will see you very soon somewhere else in the Cotswolds.